and welcome. Uh, Barnes at Top at League. Uh, so we're going up. Uh, top at League. Let's let's all be here for the rest of the season. A bit like Plymouth, what they did. Uh, yeah. Welcome today. I've got Andy in red corner and Ryan as well. Chaps, thanks for joining me. Um, so before we get to Bristol Rovers game, obviously we had a, a you know a game at weekend and it were a, a bit pretty close game to be fair, winning it seven nil. Uh, but again, going to choose night, Andy. Um, a few changes. Med um, again. I was surprised with some calls. You know. Jordan Williams, I know first team and that, but we're sprinkling the first teamers in, in, in it. How do you reckon we went on? Uh, line up and score. Um, it, it was strange feeling. I, to me, it came across like a pre season feeling for me anyway, that game. Um, I thought Youngins did all right, all came in. Uh, I thought that Wingfield uh, played well at uh, full back. Um, I think, um, I mean, it's to be expected with youngins as well, especially with level that is coming from. But I thought that Shepherd looked a little bit raw, shall we say? Um, but yeah, um, it, it was just. I think they basically just treated it as a, a friendly for me. Um, just give players a run out, um, and I think you could see that when uh, we took all more or less all first teamers off. It, it just looked like a. Under 23s uh, game at, at Endrick, like, but it, it's, I don't think it's no big loss. It's, it, you know, it didn't really disappoint me. Um, I felt for Shepard when he blazed that penalty of her. Um, but it's all part of learning, isn't it? You know, mm. uh, every footballer's done that. Um, whatever level they played, you know, uh, probably every, every footballer's done that. Um, but no, I think it's blessed in disguise, really. I think that game has gone. Um, but yeah, a few, uh, a few good uh, points to take out on it. Um, I'm still a little bit unsure with Shaw, to be honest. Only Shaw, I'm still a bit unsure about him. Um, whether he'll benefit from going out on not, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, overall, I thought we did all right. Um, and like I said, it gives game time to fringe players, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously they played Barry Cotter. <clears throat> sorry, uh, Jordan Williams, captain up night. Uh, I was a bit... I thought Winfield was a frustrating player. Uh, second half especially, because there were times he could have been bombing for it, but he seemed to play a backward ball and try to play straight. He didn't, he didn't seem to take it on. And then when he did... It led to his equaliser late on with, with Marsh. So, again, uh, I understand he's a young kid. You know, he's come back from a, a bad injury as well. So, nice to see him in, in a red shirt playing, obviously. As with other young ones, you know, Najam coming off the bench and having a go. Uh, Jallo getting a go. Aiden Marsh getting on and getting a goal. So, again, uh, I get where you're coming from. Uh, I like going to you with this, Ryan. The games, no... Meaningful is it? Uh, you know, I'm just glad we didn't pick up any injuries or anything like that. Yeah, what yeah, could have a detriment effect in the league, uh, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, I think there's no cliche in it saying it doesn't matter in the league, league is, is all that matters. It is all that matters to Barnes this season, <laughs> you know. A bit, yeah, would it be nice to have a bit of a cup run? Maybe, uh, I prefer it to be FA Cup than League Cup. Um, but like the likes of the League Cup and, and Pizza Trophy, the 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 fit young lads to go run out. And I weren't particularly disappointed. I, you know, I went, I went to the game. I enjoyed it, to be fair. I thought there were some, you know, some bright sparks. We didn't seem to be, we weren't nowhere near as attacking as we were on Saturday. But obviously, we didn't have the same players on field. And I absolutely agree with Andy. It did feel like a pre-season game. Lads weren't, they weren't charging him, were they? Because nobody wanted, they were, certainly the first team as well wanted to get injured. Um I thought John Russell played really well. I can, you know, he start, I think he's starting to come out of his shell. He was spraying ball around and he, you know, he looked he looked very solid. Um, Winfield, I, like you said, yeah, I agree with you. I think he did some really good stuff, but then he did some quite poor stuff as well. And I think that's just down to, I think that's just down to experience, I think, you know. But, you know, fair play when he got his opportunity to put it in for, for Marcy's goal. He did. Mm -hmm. And what we're really encouraging was, is that they kept going right to end and, and managed to get that goal and get the yeah, you know the equalising goal and penalties it's, it's it's down to anybody's. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, to be fair, 
Am I upset that we're out of cup? Absolutely not. I, I, honestly, I couldn't care less if I'm being honest. It was a much bigger mm. result for Tramnia um, than, than it was for us. But um, like I say, I'm glad we don't did give, pick up any injuries. Uh, what I will say is their first goal were a foul. I don't know how referee's not seen it. He was mm. absolutely shocking that referee, wasn't he? For both mm. teams, by the way, not just for us. He was rubbish. Mm. Absolutely terrible. Um, how he's missed that? Because their, their number 10's come in, shoved, lad, shoved, um, shoved defended it back. Shoved him out of way, and that lad at back post is free to edit in. And it's just, you know, it's, I thought I thought they were going to blow for it, and then he just never give it. It was just, and I thought the second goal potentially were a foul on Chapman as well, where he tried to clear it and he's, he's pulled him back. Hmm. I mean, it was a great strike. Don't get me wrong, the lad that sits it's not done the foul. It's the, it's it was the, the other player when he was trying, when Chapman was trying to break free with it. But um, I've seen them, you know, given and not given, but definitely the first one were definitely a foul. But it is what it is, mate. It would like I say it's a kick about for young lads to get and fringe players to get a look at. As far as Ollie Shaw and Andy Dallas, they didn't really get a chance, did they? They didn't really get much service into them. Um Cotter kept trying to make things happen. He kept trying to make things um kept trying to get it boxed, kept trying to get crosses in it. It was just his final touch just weren't quite there. Uh, and there were quite a few grumblings in crowd about him when he was getting ball, but you know. He's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to do the right thing. He's getting into the right positions. Um, and I think that should be encouraged, really, um, as opposed to getting a bit upset with the fact that it's not always the best ball in. But he's he's trying to do the right things. You know what I mean? Again, he is still a bit young, still a bit raw. So that would, enc- that would encourage him to see. Um, but other than that, mate, yeah, which is what it is, isn't it? It was an enjoy- enjoyable evening, <laughs> other, other than not winning penalties. Yeah, I mean, fair play as well to uh, Tramier fans that uh, made it. Absolutely, yeah. They, uh, they, they brought yeah. about 400 as well. Andy, uh, so yeah, no injuries. You know, uh, it looked like there were no injury concerns and change were made and back. So going on to Bristol Rovers away. Um, only 500 watts going due to you know, Bristol mm-hmm. Rovers side and it kind of thing. How do you see this game going on? Uh, is it going to be more a uh, similar setup lineup to what it was? Uh, a weekend when we won seven out. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be many changes from that, barring um, you know a few injuries or knocks. Uh, I think it's going to be a tough one. I think um, I don't know why, but I've got a feeling that they might be one of surprise teams me this season, uh, Bristol. I, d- I don't know why. I've just got that feeling. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a fair old. Uh, Slog is that game, I think. Um, but how we played um, against Port Vale, uh, you know, confidence has got to be sky high, hasn't it? Um, so, why can't we go there and uh, get a result? Um, but yeah, I, th- I think it's going to be more or less the same, uh, same team than what started against Port Vale, to be honest. Do you, do you think, uh, Andy, that Joey Barton win but it, but it last season as well. He kind of nullified it, didn't he? Kind of camped up and like stopped us from playing. Can you see that happening again, or do you think Bristol Rovers will go out and more express for sons a bit more? I'm expecting them um, to be a little bit more free flowing. Um, I mean, obviously they've got uh, Thomas Entman now, um, so no doubt they'll be looking to make a mark up game as well. Um, We've got, they've got, you know, some decent players in the full league one as well, especially up top. Um, mm. it, is it them who's got that Sinclair? I think it is, isn't it? Mm. Up top. Mm. Um, and I know they've got that Marquis as well, who obviously knows this league quite well. Um, so, yeah, I think they'll be a, a lot more free flowing, me. I think, like I said, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good test for us. Um, on Saturday, I honestly do. Um, but I would be surprised if we do uh, sneak some it. Um, like I say, especially with confidence being high. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, th- I think there'll be one of them uh, teams that's uh, going to surprise everyone, me this year. Um, Bristol Rovers. And like I say, I don't know why, I've just got that feeling it's they're going to be there or thereabouts when it end of the season. Uh, yeah, Ryan, I mean, just going on from that, look, Thomas probably wanted to get one up on club, but, it, you know, but he spent some time, mate, and found his love for football again. Bristol Rovers did a long spell and come back to Barnsley. 
And again, just what Andy was saying, via Bissarov is kind of could be a surprise package. You know, you know, an unknown quantity. Yeah. Well, well, a well-run side is like put together and back. I was gear a game, but what you know, it's a, a ground and a, a team that I've, I always like playing against, kind of thing. You know, it's not like, yeah, no disrespect, like one of them old-fashioned kind of games. Um, and again, that's no disrespect to Bissarovas, but it's going to. I think it's going to be interesting to see this fist away challenge under Collins. How we approach this game at Bristol Rovers because it'd be completely different against Port Vale, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, <clears throat> we've not, you know, last two times we've played at, at uh, is it the Memorial Ground? And it last two times we've played there, we, we lost one at end of eighteen nineteen season when we went up mm. the last game, mm. and we and we drew last time. But I think overall last season we had better of the two results. We took four points and they only took one from us. And mm. Obviously, we got the three goals and they didn't get any out of the two matches. But it's very early in the season, so I guess we'll kind of see it. I think, you know, I'd ideally like to see us um, win, and I think we can win, but I don't think it'll ever be anything. I don't think it's going to be like 7-0 again. Nowhere near that. We're a bit of a freak result. Um, certainly a yardstick, but not a yardstick to judge every other performance. But I think it's going to be close if we do get a win, um, which I think injury, we can. Injury time could play a part in that. Yeah, I know, uh, Ryan, yeah. we... Eight minutes, like what I think Andy said to earlier, we play until the last minute, or it might have been you, Ryan. Play yeah. like last minute, and never give up. So again, if it's going to be like something like eight minutes or ten minutes, you're still in it, aren't you? Absolutely, you're always yes, absolutely still in it, and it's same for both teams. As ridiculous as these new ad- added times are, you know, it's the same for both teams, and it. We've both mm. got the the extra the added on time to to you know to take, try and take the opportunities, but. Uh, I think Luke Thomas is probably going to feature heavily for him. He's going to want to have a he's going to have a point to prove against his former employees, um, employers. Surely not employees. Um, like I say, I predict I predict a tight game, but I think not losing would be, you know, a minimum. I think if we if, if we do come away with there from a point, as much as I'd like to win, I don't think that'd be too disappointing because I don't think there'll be many take lots of points from from Bristol at home at, at this season. Hmm. Andy, uh, just following on from that, I mean, like what Ryan said here, if you come away, we're not, you know, too many, you know, we a point, it's not a bad result. Would you make any changes going to that? Would you would you keep it as it is? Um yeah, I think I would. I think I'd uh, keep line up um as you were, really. Um can't see any reason why you should make changes. Um, like I said, barring from injuries, but yeah, um, and keep the same line up me from Port Vale game, definitely. Um, I don't think that Neil uh, centre back's got his work permit yet, so uh, I don't think he'll be at squad. But apart from that, now just keep it as it is, hmm. Ryan. I mean, I'm saying with Andy, you can't really change the side, can you? When it's been one seven, no, and they all played well, uh, and again, I get with new kid. Uh, that French guy, I'm not even going to pronounce his name yet until it comes out because I know Casper <laughs> yeah. Wapita. I've been calling it out, people saying it's Lapita and Lapita. Lapita. I mean, no, we've got a Polish friend, it is actually Wapita because I've pronounced the word. And so do, if yeah. I call him Wapita, people will be like, was Wapita, we're going over player. So <laughs> I'll call him Casper. But again, that new French kid got rave reviews, but I think it'd be a bit unfair for him just to come in. Uh, and get straight in for Steam. Bearing in mind, they all seem to play well under a first game, didn't they? Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, but Jordan were playing at right back, at right mm. centre back, weren't he? So yeah. you know, Collins did say in Chronicle that you know when when asked about the abundance of right wing backs at at, um, at Oakwell this season, mm. um, you know, what I didn't say that we called it because we've got something for the future. Want a competition for places, but he said Jordan Williams will be playing at right wing back this season. So that suggests then that, you know, as soon as we get a decent centre back in, he's going to go in at centre back. We do need a specialist centre back, don't we? So I know what you're saying about it wouldn't be fair, but if he's available, I think they'll definitely play him. Mm. Uh, that they give Nick, they give Nick, in it, I think. <laughs> French kid. <laughs> I think if he go, I think he'll go straight in if if he's available, <laughs> and then Jordan will drop out to right wing. But obviously, what? But last week we start with Corey O'Keefe. I'm not sure if he's going to be fit. I ain't uh, heard out. I know it's supposed to be. It's a thigh strain, isn't it? Yeah, it's a thigh strain. So uh, they didn't risk him too. Maybe he'll be back for Saturday. If not, it'll obviously, um, Barry Cotter will drop into that position there, I think, if if the uh, the new French lad's not playing. But Mm. other than that, midfield, up front, leave it as it is. 
potentially maybe Watters changing for maybe one Ollie Shaw or Andy Dallas. But mm. I think for me, Waters having the much more league experience than them two, I'd be I'd be tempted not to change that. Do you think now it'd be ideal time, Ryan? Um to try and get a partnership between two strikers so we're under over game rather than keep chopping and changing it and let Absolutely. them build that up yeah. and build up yeah. that uh, you know understanding together. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> early to see who's going to be the best partnership, isn't it? Who's, who's going to work best together? It ended up, mm. uh, you know, last season it ended up being Cole and, and Norwood would be the best two that work together. But we didn't know that until a bit later on, did we? But mm. hopefully it'll be hopefully it will be, you know, um Cole and and Watters, because they're definitely the most They've definitely got the most league experience under the belt. So, but we'll see. I suppose, I suppose we'll see in, in the in the coming months, won't we? We will. We will see, yeah. Andy. I mean, just going on from that, you know, I, I agree. It's, you know, you can't really change out. Uh, I'd keep with the same formation, same lineup. Oh, what do you think scores be, Andy, an influential player on day for Barnsley? Um, score. I think I'd take a one-one. Um, nah, to be honest, I think I think that would be a good result. Um, I do think that Casper. I like looking at me. Uh, I must admit, um, when we signed him, yeah, very underwhelming uh, signing. But to me, it looks all right. I think there's a a definite player in there, and Cotter looks like. Uh, well, I think he looks like a different player at minute. I know it's uh, like early doers, but. Uh, He's playing well. Um, I think Cotter, you know, uh, is going to be key to getting them crosses into the front two. Um, but I think it's going to be it's it's going to be a battle in midfield. I think Saturday, um, definitely. But yeah, I, I think Cotter is going to play uh, a big part. Honestly, do whipping them crosses in. Cotter and score draw. Then score draw. Then you're going for yeah. Yeah, I think I will, yeah. Cotton scores uh, Ryan, uh, like I said, score prediction and what do you think will be influential player for Barnsley? I think it'll be tight. I mean, like I say, Andy, if, like we Andy, I'll take, I'll take, I will take a one-all draw, actually. Because <laughs> um, I think it's going to be difficult uh, for, for lots of teams down there this season. But I, th- I think we can go in there and get three points, but it'll be tight. It'll be tight. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to say 2-1. Um, I think most influential player... I'm probably going to say Herbie Cade because I think he's been I think he's been magnificent so far. Mm. Um, you know, him and Callum Styles have, have, have been brilliant in midfield. As much as I'd like, as much as I want Luca back, I think them two with that skill and that ability to take the ball forward like look like Luca does mm. has really helped out while he's not been there. Um while he's not been in there. So it's not affected us too badly not having Luca in the team. So I'm going to say most influential player Herbie Kane, because I just think he's absolutely flying at the mm. minute. Hmm. Absolutely flying. Good point. Uh, yeah, I'm. Go- I'm. I think it's going to be goals in it. I'm going for a score drover. I'm going for two two. Um, I just think with the Adam minutes being at you know extra time in first half and second half, you know, Bristol Rovers to Tom Vader. I think we had a draw. Vader drove there first game, didn't be away. So yeah, for me, influential player. I get where you're both coming from. Um, I get where you're Herbie Kane. I get with Barry Cotter because like getting crosses in the wall. I thought when Barry Cotter came on for O'Keefe, he didn't see he didn't look out of place. He was still whipping crosses in, which were effective. Uh, linking up well with Abbey Kane, you know, he had been doing immense, he's been getting forward and bombing about. I'm just gonna go for Callum Styles though. I think if it's yeah. gonna be like a midfield battle and so tight, I think when you look at Callum Styles, I mean, saw him against Crew. Some of these runs you were making off a ball, creating spaces, and again, link up play again against Port Vale. The amount of link up and runs you were doing, it were like, This is unbelievable. This is like creating space for others to run into and dropping. I thought, Yeah, it might take a player like that to create some space for others to get in. Um, so I'm going 2 2 and I'm going Callum Styles. Um, but again, I thought Liam Roberts. Uh, his first yeah. home game, I thought he pulled off. T- uh, yeah, and one of them were offside, but I thought he pulled off two great saves. Me and even yeah. uh, Port, uh, Port Vale fans on their channel invested. What a save! So, again, all being well, I'm not going to jinx it out like that. It, I think well he's going to be busy at Saturday, Dale. So, we'll see We'll see what he's made of, won't we? Mm. I think I, th- I think there's a very good goalkeeper in there looking at him. And, um, 
you know, Middlesbrough fans were raving about him, saying he's a great, he's a great goalkeeper. Just shame he never, he never really got a chance. But when he did play, they were very impressed with him. So um, he might, he might be very well influential on Saturday because I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be a bit busier than he was against Port Vale anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, uh, let us know your thoughts and comments below. Score draw was an influential player. Agree or disagree uh, about lineups? Let us, have, let us have your thoughts. Uh, Andy and Ryan, appreciate you taking time out to join us on this. Uh, all being well, we could be coming with three points, still be at top of the league, uh, be in a position, in a position going into because we've got a tricky game at home against uh, Peterborough on Tuesday. So again, yeah. thick and fast. So again, let's be, let's get as goal differences up. Let's keep it up and let's keep the three points rolling on. Uh, if you're going down, good luck. Uh, you know, one at five hundred. What's going down? Safe journey and bring back three points to South Yorkshire. One thing left to say: you Reds. <laughs>